Now, this is not the main pathway for either of those substrates. It's not like your liver just gets some, some glucose or fructose and it just converts it right to fat. And it's not like the liver just gets some fat, you know, some fatty acids and just converts them right to fat. That tends to be really the last, the last ditch option when the other options that are ideal are not able to be uh, carried out for various reasons that we'll discuss. So generally when it comes to carbohydrates, we'll start there. The, there are a couple places that are preferred for carbohydrates to go. One is just to be oxidized directly uh, as a fuel. So, you, you know, fuel going into an engine and being burned for energy. That's one of the first places. The other thing is that the liver is one of our major storage organs for glycogen. Yeah, for glycogen and, and basically for fuel for the brain in that way, because our brain is our main consumer of glucose or one of the main, depending on how much you use your muscles at a high intensity. And uh, so our brain is one of our main producers of energy or um, users of glucose, but it can't store any glucose as glycogen. So instead, basically, the liver is the brain's storage or organ for glycogen, uh, as well as the rest of the body, too. But for the most part, actually, the liver and brain are the main ones that are using uh, at least a decent amount of that glucose and kidneys as well. Um, and Besides the muscles, because the muscles have their own sink of glycogen, mm -hmm. which can be replenished by the liver, um, you know, in certain ways. But they yeah, they store their own glycogen there. And again, they're only using that for more intense activity. Yep. So, so we've got the carbohydrates being oxidized or in the liver, they're often stored as glycogen. Uh, the glucose is converted to glycogen to be stored. Uh, and then one of the other main pathways is that the liver will convert, either convert that glucose to other carbohydrates or just release it, or sorry, convert fructose. the fructose to other carbohydrates. Yep. Yeah. Uh, including glucose. So, and I guess I should have mentioned this to start, but the reason why people are concerned about fructose and the liver is because when we consume glucose, it goes right into the bloodstream and you see, you know, a blood sugar spike. When we consume fructose, you know, in combination with glucose or not, if it gets absorbed, it goes through the liver first. So the liver is the first, um, yeah, I guess, you know, de de it's like the first area that determines what, like what happens to the fructose. Yeah. It's like the regulator. Yeah, exactly. And so one of the things that it does quite often is it'll, it'll convert that fructose right to glucose and then send it back out so that it can be distributed to the rest of the body, including to the brain. So those are basically the main things that will happen and they'll happen to a much greater extent than the fructose will just be converted to fat. As I mentioned, that conversion to fat is really a last ditch option when those other pathways can't be, uh, can't be used or, or, um, yeah, carried out. So with that in mind, let's, let's dig in a little bit to the details as far as what does happen when we're consuming fructose. What are some of the misconceptions here? And we we've talked about some of these as far as this idea that fructose just directly causes body fat accumulation or lipid, um, hepatic fat accumulation, liver fat accumulation. Um, so let's breeze through those and then we'll talk about some of the details of what actually happens with fructose at the liver. Before we get there, I just want to, so just to clarify what you're saying, there's three possible routes for fructose to go to a large extent. It's converted into something else like glucose or lactate. It's mm -hmm. stored as liver glycogen, or it goes through de novo lipogenesis, where it creates new fats in the liver. Um, that last pathway, de novo lipogenesis, in humans is very low from fructose specifically. And, and under normal considerations, right, if you're taking mm -hmm. the fructose, and we'll get to this, if you're taking the fructose in, in combination with glucose, as, and especially if it's in the form of fruit, that de novo lipogenesis pathway is 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 very small can, compared or relative to the other two pathways where it's converted to glycogen or it's basically mm -hmm. converted into lactate or or glucose and and sent out to be oxidized by other by the, the tissues of the body so mm -hmm. i that, i think that's just to like make that very clear de novo lipogenesis especially from fructose in that context is very very minimal yep yeah that's because that's yeah. what you're that's essentially what you're getting at that it's just such a it's so because a lot of people, the idea, and I think this was promoted by Dr. Lustig uh, with his whole anti fructose crusade, was essentially mm -hmm. that fructose goes to the liver, and just like alcohol goes to the liver, it's like people, like they've conflated these two things. So alcohol goes to the liver and has to be detoxified, and fructose has to be processed by the liver. So then it must be a toxin, which is logical fallacy, complete. That doesn't make any sense, especially when you compare the metabolic pathways. But it doesn't just convert straight to fat and make you fat. I mean, if that was the case, 
and these is n equals two, both you and I would be severely overweight. And mm -hmm. I think both of us have maintained our weight within relative range for years, consuming ample amounts of, of fructose. Um, yeah. It's yeah. just from just the source is from fruit. So I just want to put that out there. That's a very common misconception. And the de novo lipogenesis from fructose from fruit in particular is very low. Yeah. And we'll, we'll look at those studies in a moment, but yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of the people in the paleo sphere, the keto sphere, the low carb sphere, the carnivore sphere, will discuss how fructose is just going to be, you know, it's gonna be taken up by the liver converted right to fats. And as you mentioned, Robert Lustig was one of the main ones who promoted that. And, you know, when he looked at the pathways that he describes and he's like, this is what happens when you take in fructose, it is something that can happen, but it's all the pathways that we're going to talk about that are the last ditch pathways when it's not being used properly. And he looks at these rat studies that um, show that this is what's happening with the fructose, but there are so many confounding factors there that we'll discuss in a moment that basically prevent us from, like it prevents you from extrapolating that to eating fructose actually in your diet. It's really not the same situation because of these other confounding variables that force the fructose into these inflammatory fat producing pathways, which it really should not be doing in a healthy liver when, with a healthy fructose source in a human.